This past weekend, Rage Against the Machine made their return. It was their first concert in 11 years. One concert goer named Jack captured the messaging on the big board behind the band. It read, Force birth in a country that is the only wealthy country in the world without any guaranteed paid parental leave at the national level. These powerful sentences were put on a black screen behind the band as they played Freedom in Alpine Valley Music Theater in East Troy. It went on, Force birth in a country where black birth givers experience maternal mortality two to three times higher than that of white birth givers. For the record, Zach De La Rocha's vocals were still as good as a decade prior. As the band continued, so did the captions. Forced birth in a country where gun violence is the number one cause of death among children and teenagers. With Morello, Comerford, and Wilk accompanying Zach, the final memo popped up. It read four simple words, one that has become a rallying cry for protests around the United States, abort the Supreme Court. Their first message has merit, of course. The U.S. is indeed one of the richest countries in the world and yet one of only a few to not offer some form of paid family leave for new parents. In Britain, a working mother can take up to 52 weeks, a full year of maternity leave. 39 of those weeks are paid, provided they meet the employment criteria. Parents in Sweden are guaranteed 480 days of paid time off from work after a new birth or adoption, while a single parent gets 480 days. When there are two parents, the days are split, amounting to 200 40 days, or about 34 weeks. In Estonia, a new mother could receive more than a year and a half of paid leave, the highest in a grouping of 41 high- and middle-income countries, according to a 2019 report by the Pew Research Center. That includes 140 days with a full salary for mothers and 435 more paid days that a couple can split. And in Japan... Mothers and fathers are each entitled to up to a year of paid paternal leave after the birth of a child. During this period, they receive a percentage of their usual income, 67% for the first six months and 50% during the second half. Their second message that you see on your screen right now alludes to the following stats from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women. Multiple factors can contribute to these disparities, such as variation in quality health care, underlying chronic conditions, structural racism, and implicit bias. The third message, as we just saw last week with the massacre in Highland Park, is well-founded. Per Kaiser Family Foundation, a nonprofit, the U.S. has by far the highest child and teen mortality rate among peer countries with firearms the leading cause. The New England Journal of Medicine wrote in May, although previous analysis have shown increases in firearm-related mortality in recent years, 2015 to 19, as compared with the relatively stable rates from earlier years, 99 to 2014, this new data shows a sharp 13.5% increase in the crude rate of firearm-related death from 2019 to 20. This change was driven largely by firearm homicides, which saw a 33.4% increase in the crude rate from 19 to 20, whereas the crude rate of firearm, you see the term, increased by 1.1%. The Huffington Post wrote band members didn't talk about the controversies addressed on stage, though guitarist Tom Morello wore an I Love CRT as in Critical Race Theory shirt per Rolling Stone. Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reporter Pat Levy wrote in his article, for the show's final number, Killing in the Name, their response to the L.A. police beating of Rodney King in 91, De La Rocha sounded even more irate than he did on the original, seemingly flabbergasted that the police brutality of black people he sang about 30 years ago was still happening today. And for the performance at Alpine, Zach slightly tweaked the lyrics toward the end, transforming the song into a broader condemnation of systemic racism, adding that there are some politicians, not just some people who work forces, who also burn crosses. Levy also reported Rage previously announced that $475,000 earned from the sale of charity benefiting tickets at the Alpine show and two gigs at the United Center in Chicago will be donated to reproductive rights. Interestingly enough, Rage had an unorthodox song choice to help fans calm down as they walked out the venue. Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. Adding on, Levy Pens, 
The Raid show had several simple, cinematic, dialogue-free video clips that upheld the night's tension, often played when the band briefly walked off stage for a breather. Among the images, a Border Patrol agent posing menacingly with a barking German Shepherd, an El Paso police van burning in slow motion, a boy with a ski mask kneeling in front of a bull, and a boy with a blindfold busting open a pinata that looked like an ICE agent. This is a tour that has been delayed for years at this point. They were originally slated to play Coachella and then backed out of that. Many pointed to the coronavirus pandemic, which of course we are not out of. However, there was one stop I saw missing from their tour, who it appears Run the Jewels is going to be opening up for them once again, as they were originally slated to do. The one stop that I saw that is, of course, of significance to me is Los Angeles, California, which leads me to believe they could potentially headline Coachella 2023. 